Okay, in this section, we're going to be looking at working with multiple response variables in custom tables. Now, multiple response variables refer to uh, a set of variables which actually relate to the same question. They are typically questions where people are allowed to tick all that apply or to choose more than one option. In other words, there are a set of categories which are not mutually exclusive from one another. They could also refer to products that somebody has purchased over time since they're not mutually exclusive either. But if you look at this situation where somebody's being asked, which of the following streaming services do you subscribe to? Please tick all that apply. It turns out there is more than one way in which that can be represented as data within SPSS statistics. So in this case, in this particular example, these variables where people are checking all the uh, streaming services that they subscribe to are represented as a series of binary or dichotomous fields where if they tick any of them, they, they get a yes. And if they don't tick them, it just stays as a no. That is known as dichotomous coding. It's dichotomous meaning that there's a dichotomy, a yes, no uh, uh, outcome associated with it. It is not the only way in which multiple response variables can be coded. The second method is, uh, is when we have a situation like this, where somebody's saying, if you had to choose up to three movie genres to watch, which ones would they be? And when we look at these fields and how they're represented within SPSS statistics, we find that we can actually represent them as a series of categories rather than yes, no. We actually show the categories repeated over and over again in uh, uh, X number of fields. In this case, they're only allowed to choose up to three. So we only need three fields. This is known as category coding or categorical coding. So when you want to tell SPSS to treat a set of variables as a multiple response set, so that you can then analyze it in something like custom tables, you need to know what type of coding you're dealing with. Is it dichotomous or is it category coding? Okay, let's take a look at how we would do that in SPSS statistics. Once again, we're using a different example data set than we have previously. This one's very much focused on multiple response uh, variables. And we have two sets of multiple response variables here. First one, of course, as we've seen earlier, these are our dichotomous variables. They're asking people about streaming services that they currently subscribe to. And these are our category multiple response variables where they're asking people about the genres of movies that they watch. The first thing we need to do is we need to tell SPSS in custom tables that although these, the, although these appear to be separate fields, they are in fact part of a multiple response set. So we need to define that set first and we do so by going to analyze down the tables. And this time, instead of going to the custom tables, we go to multiple response sets. This is specifically for custom tables. So if I click on that, it says, okay, tell me which variables are in the set. And we have these list of variables here. So you can see here's the, here's the dichotomous variables. So if I just show them, subscribe to Netflix, subscribe to Now TV, etc. I'm going to choose these as a set, send them across and then what it's saying to me is, are these dichotomies or categories? Well, I can see that they're dichotomies, apart from anything else. When I right click and look at variable information, I can see there are only two values here, where one indicates that um, they do subscribe to that service. So I'm going to make sure that dichotomies is selected and I have to tell it which value to pay attention to, the counted value. Well, we know that one, as we've just seen, indicates yes, means that they subscribe to that service. That is the counted value. So we define that value and tell it to, to count up occurrences of one. And then we give our set a name. So I'm going to call it subscription and then give it a little label, which is uh, streaming services subscribed to. And then I define the set by clicking add. Notice that the subscription set is just given a little dollar symbol here to indicate that that is a multiple response set. It's a special set of variables. Let's click OK. And now let's look at how we would analyze that set. You can see it goes to the viewer window here to show us that a multiple response set has been defined. But now we're going to look at how we would analyze that set uh, using uh, SPSS custom tables. 
So we'll do that by going to Analyze, Tables, Custom Tables. And now inside the custom tables dialog box, we actually have this strange little symbol next to what appears to be a variable, but is in fact a multiple response set. The little symbol here indicates that in fact it's a dichotomously defined multiple response set of a little dot and a blank, uh, blank square there. Here are the contents of that set. Here are the categories, the individual variables themselves, and we can treat them as if they are indeed just an individual variable by picking up, dragging it across. You can see here it says count across the top. Um, if I go into summary statistics, I could go and ask for, say, um, column percent, something like that. Notice it says column percent uh, base count here. It's kind of interesting to apply selection. I'm also going to ask for total because I think this reveals something interesting about the nature of uh, multiple response set when we're working with those summary statistics. I'm going to ask it to order them by count order in descending order and hit apply. Click OK. And this is the table we get out the back of that. So something that's kind of interesting right away is that is the count here is, is actually counting two different types of value, really. It's, so it's a little bit confusing because if you were to add these values up, they wouldn't come to 442. Um, 442 refers to the number of records where at least one of these was chosen. Whereas this value here, the count value here, the default is in fact uh, the response itself, it's the ticks. So it isn't saying that um, there were 442 selections that were made. It's just saying that um, uh, there were 442 records where a selection was made and off those 442 records where a selection was made, uh, Amazon Prime was selected 235 times and 235 as a percentage of 442 is 53%. So when we add up all these percentages, they come to more than 100%. That can be a bit confusing for people if they don't know if they don't know what they're looking at. So let's just return and redo it. We'll do it slightly differently. Uh, if I go back to custom tables here, I'm going to go to summary statistics. And I just want to point out to the, the fact that I'm going to get rid of these guys here. Point out the fact that we've got actually down here our own multiple response column percentages. And here we have the responses so these are the selections that you made, if you like. So that's response. So I'm actually going to change that to selections. So it makes it absolutely clear to you. And column percent responses. So I'm going to say column percentage, uh, percentage response. I'll just, just change, change that to selection uh, response. And then if I click apply to selection and close, I can go back into totals here. I can ask for a total. Ordered this time by the responses in descending order. Hit apply. Click OK. And this time the uh, percentage, the selection percentage adds up to 100%. We can see that there are in fact 600, uh, 761 selections that were made. And this is the number of times uh, they each one was, was selected. I think for a lot of audiences, this way of showing uh, the relationship between uh, these different category variables here, these different dichotomous variables. This is probably a better type of percentaging to use. So one that's based on the responses rather than based on the frequency count. Bear in mind, of course, we can go back here and we can now split this into, you know, uh, as we would with any table using another variable like gender here. And we could add that up. And again, it's going to add, uh, it's going to sum to 100%. Okay, that's the dichotomous uh, set of variables we have. What does it look like when we do the same thing, but this time we're working with categorical variables? Well, with the category set, we're going to once again have to define that set. So let's have a look at how that's done. And to do so, we return to analyze, this time down to uh, tables and multiple response sets. We're going to define another multiple response set, but this time we're using these three variables related to selected movie genre. If I choose them, I can see that they're not dichotomous encoding because when I look at the variable information, I can see that there's definitely more than two categories in there. So I simply have to tell it that these are category encoding. Uh, uh, this is a category encoding set of multiple response variables. I give it a name, of course. So I'm just going to call it a genre and a set label, um, which will just be chosen movie genre. Add that. Click OK. That's that set defined. So let's return to analyze tables, custom tables. And here's our new set. You can see it's got a slightly different symbol from the dichotomous. 
uh, set. It's a categorical set. We can click on that, drag that across as we did beforehand, go into summary statistics as we did beforehand, and change uh, down to this multiple response set of summary statistics special ones. We'll call that responses. I'll give that the label choices and column response percentage. We'll change that to percentage choice, choices, something like that. Um, click apply to selection, close, go into categories and totals here. I'm going to ask it to sort them in order of responses, descending order and add a total to that. And I'm also going to add a field like age group across the top. Click OK at that point. And this is the table we're getting. We probably need to clean this up a little bit so that we can see the obviously see the, the labels correctly in it. So it says percentage choices here rather than cutting it off. But as we can see here that the percentages add to 100%, of course, because as do the you know, choices add up to their correct totals. So these are the actual choices, selections that people have made. We split it by age group. It's much more straightforward to interpret, but in terms of our interpretation, it's exactly the same as when we're working with a dichotomous set of multiple response variables. It's just that we define the set slightly differently.